Hi, it's Tom, I'm the Medical Method and I quit. I quit. My medic registration is coming up in about a year. I don't plan to renew it. This video is too long for you and you don't want to hear the full story. The short version is I'm founding a company I think is going to change the world of healthcare forever. It's called Heidi. It's a free tool. We're trying to get every clinician using AI as quickly as we can. Uh, the link's in the description. And yeah, the, the story of why is a long one. I posted the first video ever on the channel about 10 years ago now, almost exactly 10 years ago. It was a video about my medical school interview. You kind of know the rest of the story. All the videos on the channel are about getting in. Medical school was amazing. Uh, I had such a good time. I made some of the best friends of my life. I also spent a lot of time at Fraser's. Basically my full-time job was pitching people why they should you know, go through the suffering of getting into medicine. And that's why it makes this conversation kind of weird and hard because I'm now on the other side saying that, you know, it's not that it's not for me, it's that I found a greater purpose. Early on in that experience in say 2015, I had a conversation with one of the engineers that worked at the company, his name is Sam, and we were talking about conversational chatbots. The cool thing was that they were way better than I realized. So I'd only use those janky airline chats that everyone hates. But my experience was that these were shockingly good, like actually better than I had realized. That for me was the moment of obsession, basically trying to recreate the human brain and help machines to think like humans. As they get better and better, there's a clear path to the machines being able to do what the humans could do, as long as there was enough information and context. So I've aged out of medical school, I started as an intern, um, and I'm loving it. So I'm finally getting to actually do things, not just sit in a lecture room learning about how to do things, making all these different decisions. What's the dosage for endo and what's, what's, how much morphine should I give this patient? How do I do this maneuver? We're moving a patient out of bed. They're small decisions, but there were lots of them, and that was a fun part of being a doctor. Fast forward through, you know, my residency years, I was kind of doing the same thing as a model being trained in a computer. I was starting off with a set of base knowledge and I was learning from mistakes and experiences what the right things were to do. This kind of like art of medicine that people talk about when no one else can figure out what's going on. You know, they see the thinning of the hair on the chin and they realize the patient has low testosterone and that's that means they have a pituitary mass in their head because they're stitching together these fine details that they've seen over years of experiences that other people can't see. But that's not really an art, is it? Like it's, act, that's actually like a quantitative thing. Like that doctor has had that weight of experiences. You get these sort of usually like 45 plus year old doctors, perfectly trained neural networks for particular types of presentations. The thing that stands out is that it's relying on the mistakes and terrible things happening to actually get to that level of performance. I just had this constant weight of like, it, it seems silly that I'm taking the patient's history in 10 years time when I'm gonna be a full-time like surgical trainee or a vascular surgeon. A patient could easily have a conversation with one of these AI systems and the AI systems will almost certainly be less fallible than me when I'm hungry, late, tired, or some combination of, of the three. You know, I, I won't labor the point, but I saw lots of terrible things and I only worked in hospitals for three or four years. I saw patients with a darker skin tone having been missed for having a pale limb. The algorithm of seeing maybe a fairer skin tone where the leg is clearly pale or clearly red didn't map. He ended up having a clot in his leg and having to have its leg amputated. History of that case was a slam dunk, you know, acutely ischemic left limb. Like clearly no blood flow going, no pulse, cold, like very clear, but understandable mistake from someone whose set of experiences hadn't matched to that patient that they saw in front of them. I think the summary of all of these experiences was that every clinician should have the support of systems that can learn from experiences in a way that humans can't. I know hearing some of the stuff, a lot of doctors are extremely skeptical of the ability of a software to do what they, they do. You know, a good example is you can't feel the pulse of a leg through a screen. <laughs> um, like I'm not gonna pick up the computer and, and put it on the patient. Heidi will be able to have sensors that probably the humans won't be able to have. So a good example is blood tests. If Heidi was accessing these different blood results and seeing patients over 20, 30 years, across hundreds of thousands of clinicians across the world, all in a private, confidential way with the consent of all the parties. The ability of Heidi as a software to interpret and interpolate data over time is just something that humans can't do. Why, as a human doctor, am I gonna be able to figure out how a person's chronic anemia is tracking? 
like I'm, I'm not an Excel sheet, I'm a human. I can't look at every single blood result and interpolate all of the things that are going on. Like it's so many variables that everything gets diluted into like single one-liners. If you're urinating a lot, your potassium goes down. That's a good rule of thumb, but that's not the reality of how the physiology is running. I, I'm willing to bet it all that those softwares will, will become superior than doctors at helping with clinical reasoning and doing the right thing for the patient in front of you. But actually these tools will just put the doctor's importance in a higher regard in my opinion. There will still be a reliance on doctors to adjusting like what's the right thing for the person in front of them. Sure, maybe Heidi has looked at every research paper ever published and decided that this is the right dosing of this medication. But for the person in front of me, they actually love to exercise and one of the medicines is gonna make that hard for them. And now this is not what we do today. So this is, you know, talking future vision, like what we wanna build, what we're excited to do. We're not doing these things to try to damage the patient doctor relationship. Like that's literally why I'm doing this. I had enough weight of experiences that I wanted to make it so that any doctor, like the doctors that I would run away from if I saw at the end of my bed, I would feel confident that they could do a good job if they had Heidi by their side. And patients don't wanna hear this, but that's the truth. Like, you know, there's a spectrum of doctors, a spectrum of abilities. So going back to me, I'm sitting there as a surgery registrar. I'm finding that day to day, there's extreme polarization. 20% of my day I'm loving, seeing new patients, trying to make decisions, being in a surgical operating room, learning new things. Really that like acute problem solving experience building. And then 70 to 80% is just either painful administration and bureaucracy, fighting for resources, writing out forms, and all the time having this internal conflict that there's this massive wave of technology that's gonna change the way I practice. So it's almost like a waste, like I'm spending every day doing all this stuff that I know in 10 years time, software is gonna do a lot of. For some people and a lot of doctors, they sort of shrug their shoulders and they're like, yeah, I'm just happy. Like I'll just go to work, I do my job. I go home, it's no big deal. I'm not like that. <laughs> I find it hard to accept an external system that I'm given when it's so clearly going to be changed. Like I'm the kind of person that wants to be the one creating the change or be a part of the, the technology wave that's gonna come. So that's basically what we did. So that is the inspiration, the start of Heidi. It started with Rage Venture Capital, which is an entirely different story. In the short term, it's just note taking, you know, drafting notes, writing other documents, trying to help with mainly the administrative problem and I think doctors love the clinical decision making like the diagnosis the reasoning like all the fun parts of medicine and we, we don't want to overtake that like that's not the plan it's more that any doctor when called upon can have the support of like the wisest physician that's in the room doing all of the administrative things that you don't want to do but when you need it it's supporting you to not miss the cold pulses like in front of you or it's just making you relish the good parts of medicine because it's removing all the things you hate doing an ai voice call to the echo department to negotiate for a scan for you it's giving your patients access to the conversation that you had with them the plan letting their family members ask questions of you having conversations when you're not able to be there with them like these things sound sci-fi but actually not that hard to achieve today so that's really the mission of Heidi. How do we put human doctors at the center of giving great care and give them AI tools that make them feel superhuman? And we do all the work to make it compliant and safe. Like that's a future worth building. And that's also part of why we made Heidi free. You know, it's not cheap to run AI models. Give every clinician in the world the AI tool today. And that's already what we're doing, like it exists. You can go on the link in the description, you can sign up, you should use the product, give us feedback. Today it drafts notes, can generate any documentation that you need. And the future looks like building that AI clinical twin that can do whatever you need it to do when you're not there or the things that you don't like about your job. And that mission and obsession is what led me to ultimately leave medicine, got my undying focus and attention to try to get every clinician in the world using amazing AI tools today. That's it.